welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and look who it is, Freeride Star, Chris Smith. How's it going, <sighs> Mark? You all right? Oh, man, I'm so excited to have you on the show, dude. Obviously a big star over on EMBN, and only last week, Chris, we were talking about you, man. I we know. were talking about you. And you were talking to me in good words. I watched that episode. I thought it was really cool, actually. So cheers for having me on, and cheers for having me today as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it's so cool. Um, and actually, you are the perfect person to have on the show this week because you've oh, got yeah? some great stories on the very topic we're getting to. Nice. But before we get to that, okay, I just want to remind you that in this show, we are going to be featuring lots of action from you guys out there um, in hacks and bodges, um, how you've got involved in the caption contest, which has been fabulous this week. And, of course, we've got the bike vault later in the show. Nice. Um, we've got some fabulous news coming up. But first, let's get into this week's topic, OK? Mm -hmm. um, so, now, over in New Zealand, some really famous trails um, have just been saved. Do you know these trails, Chris? I do know these trails, Mark. They are legendary trails. I've seen them on many BMX videos and pictures. I've yet to ride them myself, but yeah, yeah. legendary. And it's the Saint, is it the St. George Trails? Is that yeah, right? George Trails, yeah. George say, Trails, yeah. In many riders edits, you know, Matt Jones, Matt, Darren Bearclough, the list is literally endless of the people I've seen riding there, and it looks absolutely epic. Yeah, and they're wonderful looking trails. Um, and they are sort of like an iconic place to go and visit if you go to New Zealand and ride. Now, there's an interesting story to these trails, but many trails out there is like, are the places we're riding even legal? Okay, are the trails you guys are on out there legal to ride on? Because many of the trails that we ride now, day in, day out, even places that are actual bike parks and chris has got a story on this very very subject in a moment at one point were not legal they True. were just kind of stuff people built in yeah. the hope no one would mind and they got on with it okay yeah um and and this is exactly the case with this iconic jump spot over in new zealand it it just got saved it is now uh, going to be uh, an official trail that people can go and ride with insurance and uh, all of the things it needs to be a legit uh, piece of riding sculpture, a piece mm -hmm. of art, but importantly, on a piece of land that the landowner is not going to bulldoze, <laughs> <laughs> which is the important bit. Yeah, um, so sure. that's the situation now. But Chris, just give us an example of how that, um, how that same kind of story has happened here in the UK and probably all over the world. Yeah, so for instance, my local riding spot um, now is Windhill Bike Park, which is literally kind of 10 minutes down the road, as you know, and it is one of the best spots, I think, in the UK currently. Um, but rewind that place back 10 years. That was a place that I think I originally rode on my Moto Trials bike probably 20 years ago. And then we started building little downhill trails in there, the odd jump here and there. And then it developed into like a full blown club, which actually managed to bring like insurance. And we had small level events and stuff there um, but it was all underground at the time and then the landowners actually got um, you know got to hear about this and decided that they were they've had enough they were going to shut it down and all of this was like hanging in the balance so uh, yeah it was gonna be a pretty sad time so then I spoke to uh, uh, B1KE which is like a big network of bike parks and riding sites that operate all over the UK and they come on board and sort of took it under their wing and invested a huge sum of money in there, got it all legit and now I literally have one place on my doorstep that is world class literally. Yeah, I mean, that is such a typical story. Now, when you say the landowners, right, to put this in perspective for anyone who doesn't know where Windhill Bike Park is, it's literally in the grounds of Longleat Zoo, which is an incredibly famous zoo in the UK. Yeah. Um, so to say there was probably eyes on the land mm -hmm. is an understatement. There was probably tigers in the trees. <laughs> um, this, this place was not easy to turn into a bike park, but now you see it on um, GMBN all the time we're always there i was only there just the other day when i finally got to get back out on my bike after lockdown um that was my first ride back at windhill yeah. bike park yeah, it was cool wasn't it? i remember that day it was an excellent day but it was just Very nice funny. to have have that spot you know we're not like 
digging, looking over your shoulder, thinking like, oh my God, is someone going to come and stop me from digging here? Um, you know, used to, if there's a fallen tree on a trail, you used to go out there with a chainsaw on the back of your quad and whip that tree out. And you're like always constantly like worried about the landowner seeing you. But with all that removed, it, it literally just become the dream sort of out there pretty much in my back garden. Yeah, and I mean, and you've got, I'd say a little bit of a uh, rich history of riding not necessarily legal places um, because obviously you're a rider as we were talking about only last week that is willing to proper send it of some crazy stuff which means you've got to find crazy stuff where you can find it man so I mean what about some of these quarries you've ridden in I mean is that legal mm, probably not and as you mentioned all that free ride stuff like here in the UK that is only you're only going to find that terrain mostly in like abandoned quarries and a lot of those places have security their fences and probably as you mentioned not allowed to ride there but the only way you're going to get those sort of hits is by going and exploring these places and i've got some funny stories for you from exploring some of these places <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I remember once uh, i found this really cool spot on google maps i drove there it was quite a long drive out bearing in mind i've pretty much been to every quarry probably in the southwest or in the south i would say um like you do is a day out exploring these places but i got there and i was like super excited i put my head over the gate swung one leg literally over the fence and this massive alarm went off literally made me crack my pants and literally jump back down there's a pre-recorded message in there saying uh the police are on their way you're uh, entering a restricted area and all this stuff uh, i jumped back in the car and I literally drove down the road and then did a bit more Googling on this place. And it was actually a place where they detonate explosives, like, you know, and train the military police to explode stuff. So it's probably a good uh, job. I actually didn't get into that one because I might not be sat here uh, doing the show with you, Mark. <laughs> Mate, you could have been doing some explosive riding that day. It definitely in all would of have been. the wrong ways. My yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, I mean, that, I mean, it's a perfect example of just how these things can... Um, go the right way and the wrong way where Chris could have been blown up. Um, so ask yourselves out there, guys, are you riding legal trails? Um, and if you are, which hopefully you are, um, think back about the history and what's happened to make those trails legal. Because these days we've all got big battles of insurance, things that have just got to be there to protect us all. Um, and sometimes there really is an incredible story and an incredible core group of people that have made the trails we're riding happen and be legal so maybe be really grateful for it and enjoy it that little bit more and if it's illegal places you're riding maybe keep quiet or start looking into in some insurance let us know in the comment sections down below me and chris would love to be reading about it later on let us know um, if you've been riding uh, some illegal trails or you know any of the stories of how your trails have become legal. Um, after this show goes live, actually, I'm going to be down in the comments for about an hour after the show goes live when it first goes out. Um, so I'll be in there listening to these stories and uh, getting involved. So I hope to see you there. I really hope to see you there. Um, right, we've got some great things to announce this week, Chris, um, on this week's show. Uh, let me tell you about this. Um, over on EMBN, you've got a new partner coming on nice. board. Nice. Who's this uh, then? Like, uh, Shotgun. Oh, coming nice. in on EMBN, a uh, great little product. They've got some new things coming that I'm not allowed to talk about, but um, definitely fun times. I know that Neil is a massive fan of uh, the shotgun ride thing, so he really likes it. Getting out, and it's going to be perfect on an e-bike, going out oh. with your kids on your front. Oh, do you do that? Yeah. You probably already do. Uh, I do do it a lot. I've actually got one kid on the front. Sometimes it, they would like to take it in turns riding because that's like the prime spot is on the handlebars. And the other thing I've got is one of those elasticated ropes as well. So double resistance training, kid on the front, and then pull the other one up the hills. But as you mentioned, that kids ride shotgun thing yeah. is definitely going to be pretty exciting. Also, talking about legal trails, there's been a world record broken over in... Now, where did they do this? This is the Davos Klosters, uh, and it is Sylvain Maafert and Ralph van der Berg. Um, they broke the sound barrier in one day. They conquered 20,845 metres of vertical descent on the Davos Klosters single tracks. Um, sounds like and looks like an amazing day out, but broke a world record at the same time. Um, such a cool looking uh, 
day out. It looks like a fabulous magazine shoot, doesn't it, Chris? It does, does it, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks absolutely Unreal. epic. And that's some big figures there, isn't it? I've pretty much blown my mind. Yeah, that is some big figures. I was going to say, it must have been some big arm pump on the go uh, after that. Yeah, oh, blows my mind. Man. That's crazy. Nice Can one there, guys. Can imagine? Yeah, very, very cool. <laughs> um, uh, as you've probably noticed, Chris, um, even yep. though I'm not actually there, you've seen on our Zoom meeting and how we're connected, that I'm very resplendent in red today. I'm in my uh, M uh, MX top. I did GMBN, notice that. Bright red. Love mm -hmm. it. But I wanted to say, over on the store this week, we have got a Beat the Heat campaign going. Cool. So mm -hmm. all of our items, like shorts, our short sleeve tops, we've got hats in there, we've got our uh, training tops, they're all in there in bundles. You can go in there uh, and get 15% off of our Beat the Heat wow. uh, campaign. So head yeah. over to the shop. Chris, how do you fancy some news? I do fancy some news. What have we Thanks, got, mate? mate? Let's have a look. Here we go. What you got, Tom? What you got, Toff? What's up, everybody? To open this week, I've got some pretty cool news of a new product from Muckoff. They've produced the world's first plastic-free bike wash, and it's called Punk Powder. As with most Muckoff cleaners, it's fully biodegradable and does the same job on your bike as the usual Nanotech cleaner. Not only does it eliminate excess packaging, but it also is smaller and lighter for shipping. So there will be a considerable reduction in CO2 on that front, too. With this release comes the option of a bottle for life too. Basically an aluminium muck-off spray bottle that you can refill time and time again. But you can actually use any old existing plastic bottle. Just rinse it out so it's clean, add some punk powder and top up with water and you've got your bike cleaner. Pretty cool. In other muck-off news, they've dropped their sponsorship of the Commensal 21 team after some unacceptable stories from the team manager and Omri Piron will be headed to a racial stereotyping awareness course paid for out of his sponsorship money. Back in May 2020, SRAM published an article in their True Stories series about a guy from New Zealand called Ben Hildred, who loves a bit of climbing. So much so that he climbed 55,000 meters in just 30 days, which is the equivalent of the outer surface of the Earth's stratosphere. What's even more impressive is that Ben did this all while holding down a full-time job as a mechanic at Vertico Bikes in Queenstown. Well, now he's gone even further. Ben set out to conquer 1 million feet in as short a time as possible, setting himself the challenge of 200 days. To put things in perspective, 5,000 feet is a good day in the saddle, a number that some of us will see next to our weekend rides. But to meet his target, Ben had to do this every single day. It's a brilliant story with a few crazy twists, so I recommend heading over to the SRAM website and taking the time to read it yourself, as it's an amazing feat of endurance and perseverance that most of us probably can't fathom. But the result is, of course, a new fastest known time for reaching 1 million feet on two wheels. Just 200 days. Madness. Right, a new bike from Orange. They've released the Alpine Evo. With 160mm of travel up front and 155 in the rear and 27 5 inch wheels, the Evo has less travel than the Alpine 6 that it takes its name from, yet it's slacker, longer and lower. It's got mounts on the underside of the top tube for accessories, a new asymmetric swing arm which provides more rigidity, progressive suspension and a frame design and built in the UK. The launch edition is available now with an awesome stealth green color and some cool graphics, a Hope Shimano drivetrain and RockShox suspension. There are also a new set of pedals from Shimano, an update to their Saint Flats, the M829. They look much thinner than the previous version, which is reflected in the weight, just 397 grams for the pair, which is 156 grams lighter than the previous model. They've also got a carbon fiber integrated skid plate too, which is cool. I can't say I've seen carbon fiber used that much in flat pedals before. Canadian freerider Graham Agassi has announced that he'll not be attending Red Bull Rampage this year. After receiving a wildcard invite to compete in Rampage this October, Aggie posted on his Instagram that he's not ready for it and would instead rather give the opportunity to someone who is. He sustained a pretty heavy ankle injury back in March. Ankle? What, what part of your body is an ankle? He sustained a pretty heavy ankle injury back in March and Rampage takes no prisoners, so it's a good call by the veteran freerider and we'll have to wait until 2022 to see him stomp a run in Utah once again. Now, before I hand you over to Toff for the sickest thing of the week, I'll just rattle you through some competition winners quickly. 
A few weeks ago, we ran a Vittoria airliner giveaway through the Dirt Shit Show and on our socials. If your name is on screen, congratulations, you're a lucky winner and we'll be in touch via the email you entered on sometime soon. Right, now it's over to Toff. Take it away, dude. Cheers, Tom. Hey, everyone. Right, this week's sickest thing is a new edit from Mark Matthews and Scott Bell called Blueprint, and it's so sick. So Mark's an amazing trail builder and a really big sort of trail building advocate in general. I mean, when he builds his trails, he wants them to look amazing just as well as they ride, basically. And this video really shows that. I mean, these trails look so good and they look like they ride amazing too. Right, so one of the main things that he's talking about is how like trail building in general is an art form and it's basically almost like sculpture, isn't it? So some places it's completely legal and you can build whatever you want and just like completely change the way people have fun on their bikes, which is so rad. And then other areas, it's almost like this weird graffiti sculpturing, I guess, where you kind of need to build stuff where it's kind of like invisible to normal people and that way people won't like tear down your trails or take offense to it or, or worse like make booby traps which could be super dangerous to riders. And the cinematography was absolutely amazing from Scott Bell. I mean it reminded me of this old school video called Life Cycles, don't know if you've seen it. Basically it was amazing. Um, turns out that wasn't the inspiration but I'd say definitely go check out. I'll also put a link to that in the description as well as the actual video because there's like loads of really cool behind the scenes of how they actually executed this project. Anyway, that's my sickest thing this week. I'd say it's definitely worth checking this one out. Right, it's time to go back to the shed. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Toff. Fantastic stuff, keeping us up to date there. Um, Chris, right, we've got hacks and bodges coming up. So I want you to give nice. us the official, is it a hack? Is it okay. a bodge statement? Yep. Um, starting out with this one mm -hmm. from Clint. Um, he's got a Trek Remedy. He's over in Brisbane. Um, rear light failed, right? But he had a mm -hmm. spare front light. Simplest of hack or bodge, right? Red pen, your front light. Look at that. Spare rear light. I, re I really, Simplicity. really like this one. It's super simple, as you mentioned. And of course, it's pretty law abiding. You know, you need a red light on the rear of your bike. If you've got a white one on the front, it can lead to all sorts of problems. So I think that is definitely a hack. And I, I might take note of this one. Yeah, it's really clever, isn't it? He's done yeah. such a good job of it too. Yeah, um, for sure. So cool. But this week, I've really gone with simplicity on the hacks and bodges. I, nice. I, I sifted through, and I've, I think that one's brilliant. Just a simple pen, all right? Now, if you think that's simple, this one's nearly unbelievable. Um, look at this. Could this really Whoa. work? Chris, talk me through this. Does it? Could this possibly be real? It could. I think I've been there myself where you've been out for those rides and you do get a tear in your tyre, so... I think this is obviously on a tubeless setup. This can't be with a tube. Yeah, no. um, but I think sometimes you can get, it won't just quite seal the tire sometimes on those bigger tears. So I think adding a bit of pressure and adding like, what's this, a leaf Some or something? Some greenery. Some, some greenery into it <laughs> yeah. could, essentially. I think with the pressure of the zip tie and that added layer, then possibly it could work. He said, um, I don't know. I, I don't think, know. I think this is legit. I think it would work to possibly get home. Maybe. Um, right, next up, also the simplest of modifications, mm -hmm. but the joy it can bring. This is from John, Whoa. who's got a Cube Pro Aim, um, and he's in Limerick in Ireland. Um, and his son got a new helmet. He thought he'd spice it up a little bit. Got the old Sharpie out. I'm uh, a fan of the Sharpie art myself. And he's just, he's, look at this, he's just totally transformed the helmet. Use some stencils. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? I think what you're able to do these days, you know, and that's just with the stencil and a, a few Sharpies. I remember this is the design you did on one of your lids, actually. That was purely uh, a Sharpie as well, wasn't it? And that was pretty mind-blowing. Um, this one's really great. I like this a lot. And I tell you what, it's great fun to do. Um, it's ballsy move doing it on a brand new lid, though. That's, that's a ballsy move. Um, <laughs> Definitely. I, I, I think that's great. Uh, you must have, in your younger years, Chris, you must have modified some clothing or some helmets or something to make yourself look like Hans Ray or something. You must have done it. You must uh, have done it. I used to a few, yeah, stickers and modifying. I think I remember like modifying different stickers to say different things on your helmet. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably I often rude that. words and stuff like that. You know, I, I remember <laughs> doing stuff like that. Yeah, and the clothing. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool just to get that inspiration. Make yourself stand out. I think some riders are actually known for having those standout parts or the stuff they wear. So, yeah, if you make your own uh, sort of identity, then it's got to be a good thing, I think. Um, fantastic hacks and bodges. That last one, definitely a hack, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, it's well um, 
I think the I think the zip tie is definitely a bodge. Yeah. Um, what would you pick as your favourite in there? Because the one you pick, Chris, I am giving a version of this GMBN race top to. So you'll be getting one of these. Who are we giving it to? It's either going to be to Clint or to Simon or to John. Who's going to get it? I want to say the first one, which, sorry, was Clint, was it? The red I light believe guy. that is Clint, yes. Yeah, yeah the, I would like to say that, but I think for the effort that's gone into it, I think John should take that, for sure. <laughs> oh, Clint robbed at the last <laughs> guard. Sorry to uh, tease you there, Clint. You tease, yeah. John, <laughs> you are a winner of the uh, GMBM race top. Congratulations. Um, hey, everyone out there, if you're watching, if you've got a hack or a bodge, you can see how simple it can be. Send it in to us. Um, I love going through them. I absolutely Absolutely love it. Uh, some of the stories that go along with some of these hacks or bodges are brilliant. Um, but anything that you think could help your fellow rider out with an idea where you've just cracked it and thought that could change the game for someone, send it in to the GMBN uploader. The link is in the description down below. Caption contest. Nice. Um, here we go. Uh, last week's photo mm -hmm. was this one of Blake. He's a weird dude, isn't he? He's he a weird. Look at this photo. What is he doing? What a weirdo. <laughs> what a weirdo. First, um, we had lots of lots of uh, captions come in, all on a similar vein. Mm -hmm. I quite like this one from Flashman. It says, this is quite clever, this one. Blake licking a stamp before sending it. <laughs> That's clever. I like that. That's it is good. cool, isn't it? Like, yeah, really, both of those. really good. What about his second one? Give us this so, second one, Chris, because it's so, on a similar, similar story, this one. Uh, this is from That Dave Guy. He's saying... Uh, has anyone told Blake that's not how you lick a stamp? <laughs> great, <laughs> Pretty, great. It's so good, the stamp, you know, the name of that pedal getting transferred into this is, yeah. It's not, not, many, not many shows, right, can leverage in sponsors into their captions. You know? oh, it's that's good, pretty it's good. good. Like We're doing this. well. Um, last one here is from Martin Schwartz, and he says, what can you say about a bloke who wears a pink helmet and goes around kissing scarlet pedals? <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. The guy is a lunatic. He's it all, a lunatic. It all sounds pretty sketchy to me. I think the whole pink helmet, you know, we've had so many different jabs at him with the uh, pink helmet jokes, but <laughs> oh, yeah, God. a brave man, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not down with that pink helmet. Then him and him and Rich are running. I like the bright orange one. Yeah, but I probably offend as many people as the pink one does with the orange. I don't True. know. I like the orange one. I like the orange one. Okay, yeah. who are we going to say is the winner? Winner this week. The winner. Let's up the ante. What should we? Let's give out one of our super cool caps. Oh, wow, we've got nice. some wicked caps mm -hmm. from our Beat the Heat campaign. Um, yeah, one of our five panel hats, maybe. Uh, go on. Uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard, isn't it? Um, I think Blake licking his stamp before sending it. So Flashman 2008, good. I think. Yeah, <laughs> leading the way. You got Flash a hat man. coming out. You are on the way with a hat. Well done. Nice. Uh, really cool. Um, right, okay. This week we're going to do something a little bit different. It's not caption contest. It's meme this. Look at this photo. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks for that one. Oh. <laughs> you look amazing. Okay, what I want you guys out there to do to that photo is imagine it, you're seeing it on the internet, meme it for me. So meme this in the comments down below. Hashtag meme this and your meme text. And we will then, on the winner, we're going to put that, maybe a few of them, we're going to put that on the graphic itself and it will be appear on our social media. Oh, you great. Could go, you could go viral with this. <laughs> I can't wait. Thanks so much for that. I'm going to be paying you back for this one, Mark. Don't you worry. <laughs> so meme this, please, this week in the um, comment section down below. Loving it. Let's get into the bike vault this week. But before oh, we yes. start, check this out, right? I'm so chuffed mm -hmm. with this. It's sent in from Sander. Um, he's over in Belgium, in Brussels. And look, he's done us a little beat. You know, me and Blake have got oh, a, yeah. it's the bike vault. Look at oh, this. The other one. Look at this beat. Look at Whoa. it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That, that might be. I don't know if we need to get like the license off of uh, Sander or not, but I think that <laughs> might be the new bike vault beat. I love it. I think it's good, isn't it? It's yeah. so cool. I love it. It's taking, it? us taking us in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, right. First bike this week. Now, I tell you what, I just love this photo so much. So simple. The colours are great. But there's no there's no details with it. Can you believe that? Oh, oh. oh what? 
Who yeah. would send a bike into the bike vault without putting your name to an amazing photo like that? Oh, that's just wrong, I right? I love the colour. I think there might be a filter on the camera, but for whatever reason, that frame colour pops, doesn't it? Yeah, it does stand out, doesn't Very it? It reminds nice. me of my old uh, transition carbon bike, that colour, mm. isn't it? How smooth it looks. It's, yeah, a nice looking bike, but... Yeah, luxury, yeah. luxury. I wish we had the details there. If you're putting stuff in the uploader, make sure you give us your name and give us a little story. Tell us about it, man. <laughs> um, but it's a great looking bike. It's a super nice to start. Nice. Is that Sweet. your bike? Never be able to prove it now. Um, right, Stephen is up next with his YT Jeff C Blaze. Love these bikes. This is in Grisdale in the Lake District. Um, what are you giving that, Chris? What are you giving that? I'm gonna give that as much as a log pile is really cool. And I think we've all been there with our pictures, you know, yeah, sticking them up yeah. against log piles. Yeah. I think it just detracts a little bit from the detail of the bike. So Very I'm busy. gonna be harsh. And you've cut that front wheel off. It's a nice, I'm afraid, for it's me. It's a nice, it's a nice. And um, I mean, Chris, obviously I'm not there. Have you got the bell ready if we get a big super nice? Have you got the bell? I mean, Sand, hiding away. Yes, Sander, yes, so Sander had the bell. I like that little located touch. Located it. I've located it. I've got okay, it. Great. So okay, great. We are ready. I was just panicking mm -hmm. then when we, I was thinking, is he going to say super nice? We've got no bell to ring. Um, okay, here we are now with Johnny's next one. Um, it is a Sonder transmitter. I've not heard of a Sonder. I don't know Sonder. No. Um, lovely bit of graffiti. Now, Chris, do you feel the same about the graffiti as you do the busy logs? What's your thoughts on that? I think the the, the, uh, the graffiti is a lot more, you're able to pull out the bike. I think with oh. the log pile, it gets um, lost a little, but this is oh. a lot cleaner bike. It's a nice looking, aggressive looking hardtail. And it is in Steetly Quarry, and it is a quarry that I've ridden. So that for me, that has got a B. Super nice, super nice. Love it, love it. Um, I reckon you probably wall rided that bit of graffiti at some point. There's actually a big double in front of that, if I remember right, actually. So What's I haven't ridden right? it, but maybe a, a big wall ride transfer possibly might be on the cards, but nice. don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell you what, this next one I like a lot. This is from Jackson. Uh, this is his Rocky Mountain Instinct in beige and purple. Um, oh, it's a beige, is it? I didn't realize that. It's a beige, uh, it's in Corner Canyon in Utah. Nice. Um, every time I say Utah, I can't help but think about the film Point Break. Because, <laughs> because the, the Keanu Reeves character is Johnny Utah, isn't it? Is that right? yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. 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 But I think Utah to me just screams uh, Red Bull Rampage to me and uh, uh, looks kind of like that uh, sort of area, but not quite. But it's a yeah. nice shot, isn't it, with those flowers? And if you, need, you had a yellow bike, I think, you know, we would oh. be talking super, super nice. But super. I don't know what you're going to give this one, Mark. What are you thinking? Um, I really like the bike, actually. I think I'm a big fan of it. I'm going to give that a super nice. Love the flower. Um, super nice. Ring that bell, man. Ring that bell. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, okay, <laughs> next up, we are with Sire Taxi's Santa Cruz 5 5010 um, in Central Coast, New South Wales. Um, he's recently installed a Fox 36 and a Float X2 on the rear. So he's got nice. all the gear on this bike. Um, or what are you thinking on? Coding on. Yeah, what are you think? There's not. a lot of colours actually. If you look close, Chris, there's a lot of colours on this bike. There's a lot of colours. Yeah, I think, but I'm thinking it's it's all in tune. I think we've got like the Maxxis yellow logo, you've got the yellow logo on the forks, uh, down tube, shock, pedals, and then is that a red? No, cassette? no, like a... orange. We've got orange brakes, red cassette, and purple. Purple derailleur. Derailleur. <laughs> Come on, man, it's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. But I, speak, I was speaking to Doddy about colour coordinating. Uh, Doddy is against it now. He's going for all different colours. So maybe this is the oh. new rage. And we're not cool yet. Maybe no, not. I, I mean, Doddy does know the trends. He, he does, does he's know the trends. The, he's got his finger on the pulse, hasn't he? So maybe. It's nice. It's nice. Oh, nice. Let's just keep okay. a lid on it, all right? It's nice. <laughs> Next up, it's. Andrew's Linksy Ridgeline. Okay, now, so this is what we probably go down the uh, more. Is this, would we say budget? Is that unfair? Oh, you can't just call a Linsky. That's a titanium frame, so oh. it's going to be quite big money. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I've got this opposite. I thought, I yeah. just looked at it. I looked at it, man, because the to me, the geometry is sort of uh, mm -hmm. slightly dated, isn't it? No, it is. I think it's an old school, by mm. uh, well, the name Linsky is definitely, they did have uh, some of the first like wow. uh, premium titanium frames. So yeah, it's actually a titanium oh, bike, Andrew, I believe. I apologize. I didn't realize. Okay, so I just, <laughs> I looked at the geometry. I instantly saw a silhouette of a pretty, 
I guess I was thinking a, a bit of a budget bike, but no. Mm. No, the I think the LT, the LT possibly stands for a long travel 140 mil. Uh, you know, the fork is yeah. obviously a bit longer than the average sort of cross country fork. But Linsky, yeah, they they were a premium name. You know uh, what? For as, like as Thai I, cross country. As I look at it now, Chris, I'm looking at it. It's got a SRAM 1x11 drivetrain, You're, carbon you, eastern wheels and bars, CK headset. It's not, but it could it couldn't even fit in the budget box if you tried. <laughs> it's actually it's got everything on it to prove. It's got a dropper on it, KS dropper, WT. I, I, um, I apologise. I, I think it's got 26-inch wheels on there, possibly, by the looks of it. That might have thrown you, possibly. I don't know, is it 26 or 27.5? Uh, you know, it doesn't take much to throw me, Chris. Let's just, let's just <laughs> give it a super nice and move on. Let's give it a super nice. Last up, we have got, finally, something I realise what this is. This is definitely a Gary Fisher, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let yeah, me, it's a yes. nice. Yes, it's a Gary Fisher. It's old school, colours old school everything we cannot give a bike with a bike rack on the back a super nice we we, <laughs> we cannot and there's only one other thing stopping it from being a super nice is that stem so there's there's two good reasons not to give it a super nice but it's great and it is yeah. definitely nice Definitely it is a nice. nice. It's a nice retro ride, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, but yeah, we can't quite hit the bell on that one. Um, great no. bike vault this week. Thank you for sending those in. Um, if there's one thing I like more than looking at any of the uh, fails and sends and the hacks and bodges and the, the reading your comments, captions, it is the bike vault. I love it. For sure. I love it the is. bike vault. I know it you've is. got your version over on mm -hmm. EMBN2. Yeah. Uh, but it's great to see all the bikes yeah. out there. Um, that's what yeah, it's all about. That's what it's yeah, all about. Yeah, for sure. It's all about yeah. the bikes. So thank you for sending them in. Keep them coming. Is your bike a nice or is it super nice? Is it? Is it really super nice? Well, there's one way to prove it. <laughs> Send it in to the uh, GMBN uploader and we will take a look at it. It could be next week. You could be uh, starring here. Um, I think because I was so mean about the uh, Link C, I'm going to send Andrew a super nice T-shirt. Just to prove should. it, because I got that all wrong. <laughs> I should know better. Um, Chris, it, I tell you what, it's been a delight having you on the show this week. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming on. No uh, worries. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I can hear I can hear applause out there. I can hear applause. <laughs> it's been fantastic. Um, and your examples of uh, legal stroke illegal trails mm -hmm. was absolutely yeah. on point. So thanks, man. Thanks nice. for joining us. No um, worries. Thank you, everybody out there, for being on this, being with us on the show. Really enjoyed having you along, of course. Appreciate your likes. If you click that thumb on just down there, it goes blue. It's a rumor. That's what I've heard. Why don't you try it out? Give it a click. It gets more people seeing mountain biking. Um, that's the Dirt Shed Show for this week. Until next time, I'll say goodbye from me. Chris, sign yourself out of here. Good to see you guys. Yeah, and as Mark says, get involved in the comments and hopefully see you again on the GMBN Dirt Shed Show. Yeah, see you down in the comments, guys. See you later, bye.